And the Rams are going to Super Bowl 56. Super Bowl, and that's Joe Namath and Joe Montana, and Joe Burrow's trying to be the third. Hello, and welcome to a special Super Bowl Sunday edition of Real Talk with Stephen and Cam, where we keep it 100. Today is a very special day in the world of football, and the world of, in the world of the world, anyway. Uh, it's Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> How you feel? How you feel, Cam? It's Super Bowl Sunday. I mean, I'm excited. Outside the part you talking about some the world of the world, but I mean it's okay. That's fine. It's a great day. It's fine. It's just it's okay. It's it's a fantastic day to play some football, Cam. I'm gonna need some more excitement out of you. See, it would be exciting if I, if I was in California with everybody else at Super Bowl, but I'm not. Yeah. One question. One question. Is it unfair to have the Super Bowl in your home stadium? No. Why not? Because at the end of the day, it's the Super Bowl. So your home stadium is mostly, it's still, I think it's still going to be like neutral because you also got to think of all the celebrities that's going to be there. And Cincinnati ain't been in the Super Bowl in a long time. So I know all these fans about to show up, spend their little money on the, on the tickets. And I don't think it's fair. I mean, I think it's fair. I think it'll be, it'll be decent. Uh, and plus I mean, the Niners have a, Niners have um, plenty of experience with a, uh, Having a neutral games. Look at the Niners game. There weren't that many Rams fans there. They used to this. Mm, I don't know. I do not know. I mean, the Rams just kind of moved to St. Los Angeles. Maybe that's why there were more Niners fans in there. And, of course, it was a playoff game. So it was definitely going to be cheaper than a Super Bowl. But I don't know. I feel like, mm. some L- I feel like, I feel like a lot more L.A. Rams fans is going to show out instead of Bengals fans. But that's besides the point. They're I think there. it'd be 50-50. 50-50. I don't know. I mean, I mean the, Super, the Super Bowl. I mean, the Super Somebody. Bowl, the Super Bowl don't really have fans anyway, though. It's not like diehard fans up there, like yes, it do with the face paint and everything. Nah. Yes, it do. Super Bowl is way, way more civil. Way more civil. No, it's not. Super if Bowl you look made for if TV. You, if, let's think about now. Don't get me started. Because let's look at the Super Bowl with the Seahawks and the Broncos. It was more Seahawks fans at MetLife Stadium, and they were loud. And they had their face paint and their 12s, flags, and things. And then let's look at that Super Bowl with Philadelphia versus New England. The Eagles fans were there with wings on and their little dog masks. They was the underdogs that playoff season. Yeah, let's talk. They, they be real hardcore fans out there. Because that's different. They, the state. The, no. The states, when the Falcons was there. The when the Falcons won there. We had the little Falcon lady and the Falcon man that be, you know, the Falcon lady and the Falcon man that's real known around Atlanta. They was at the Super Bowl all dressed up to the that is two that and is everything. Two that is two people. Child, that's two people that I know of. I'm pretty sure it was more folks out there with the face paint and everything going on. That was two people. I'm all I'm saying. saying is I think it ain't going to matter that the Rams got home field advantage because it's Super Bowl. It's a neutral site. And, and like, it's going to be it's going to be Rams fans there. It's going to be Bengals fans there. But it's also just going to be football fans there in general. It's going to be you're going to see a lot of different jerseys. You're going to see, of course, you'll see the Bengals and the Rams jerseys, but you're going to see a, a New England jersey somewhere. You're going to see a Tom Brady Tampa jersey. You're going to see an Eagles jersey. You're going to see all types of jerseys and uniforms out there because it's basically just a big event uh, bringing, you know, the, the end of the season. Um, to an end together as a football family. So that's why I think it doesn't really matter. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. But I still think, I still think Super Bowl is a made for, is a made for TV event, which is okay. Cause I mean, you see everything surrounding what do you mean advertisement. By that? What, what do I mean? mean? A made a made for TV event. It means that it gets more um how you say, you know, publication, uh justification, I guess you could say through ads and TV and watching it on TV. I mean, you can go to the game, but I feel like the shared experience of the Super Bowl is shared when you're having a little Super Bowl party with your friends or with your family. You're sitting in front of the TV and watching it. 
That's why. That's just what I. This is what I feel like. I, I mean, it'd be it'd be it'd be awesome to go and see the Super Bowl for real. I don't get. Like, it. I don't if get. If you it. go to the Super Bowl, are you gonna see the Super Bowl ads? Are you? Uh, you gonna see some ads because they show ads in the stadium. You are gonna see the Super Bowl ads that's be on the TV. Cam. You might see a Dorito ad in there. Uh, a Dorito ad. You're gonna see a Dorito. Or you might see. You, you might see, see a like a com- It might not be. It might not be like a commercial, but you definitely gonna hear the thank you. You know, for supporting this. This is sponsored by Dorito. Something like that. Yeah. In the well, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, like not, that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the the ads, the funny ads that they play. Okay. Don't nobody care about year. them ads because you can find them same ads on YouTube. You'll be uh, fine. Yeah, but people. What about the people who don't? Like football. That Honestly, much. watching Super Bowl on TV is more annoying than probably spending the money to go watch it in person. Because I get tired of them commercials every five minutes. They got commercial break every five minutes. That's exactly why. It. That's what I'm saying. Why? It's a it's a made for TV event. You just proved my point. It's a made for TV event. That's why there's a commercial every five minutes because made for why? TV or is it made for them pockets? Made for TV to be made for them pockets. Hmm. Okay, I get that. Okay, thank you. But, like, what do they got to do with the fans and being home for that event for the Rams? Because that's what your original question was. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm not. That's what I'm saying. Because is it, is it, well, I guess we don't really have nothing to do with that. It has to do with my second question. It don't. Let's do my second question. So, what's the second question? You ain't never get there. You ain't never get there. No, you did not. I gave you the answer to the first question. You started, you came up, you must ask questions in your head because you started (laughs) answering the second question by yourself. I didn't know there was a second question. Yes, I did. I asked you if the Super Bowl was a made for TV event. Well, I was telling you, and you was just exactly, you was telling me that that was no question. So maybe it wasn't a question, it was a statement, and it was a true statement. But moving on, because I mean, it is, and you proved my point anyway. So Moving on. Okay, yes, I did. I got your point now. I get your point. You you are right for moving, that. Statement. Moving on, moving on, Camden. Who do you have for the Super Bowl? Reminder to our listeners in the Super Bowl today will be the Los Angeles Rams and the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh so mm-hmm. Cam, who do you have? I have the Cincinnati Bengals winning the Super Bowl 34 to 31. In overtime. Why is that? I just think that this game is the Rams game to lose. I think that the Rams got all the star power. They got all the fans. Plus, they at home, which means they have more support. You know, like even though it's 50, I said it'll be 50 50, and it doesn't really matter. It's still going to matter, probably like in in the point spread, I guess. Like, I think people take that into consideration. Um, but I think that the Rams are kind of going to – they're kind of going to underestimate the Bengals, partly because of the Rams' defense compared to the Bengals' offense. I think that in order for the Bengals to win this game, though, they're going to have to try to run the ball. They're definitely going to try to use Joe Mixon. He's definitely going to have to be a, like a MVP-type candidate um, in this game. I think they're going to have to run the ball at least 20 to 30 times. Um, because you got to set the run game. It's going to be hard to do because of the uh, Rams' defensive line. But I think the Bengals can can run the ball enough to make the Rams respect their run game. Um, I think that the Rams will – this is how I think the game is going to go. The Rams going to be up at halftime. We're going to think that they're going to pull away from the game. And then lo and behold, Joe Shiesty, Joey Franchise, Jer Burr, Super Bowl Burrow, he going he gonna to stage a comeback, and then they're going to get in overtime with 31 points, side at 31. And Stephen McPherson, Shooter McPherson, the kicker, Evan McPherson, I'm sorry, not Stephen, Evan, I'm sorry, Stephen Hudson. I, I didn't mean to get you confused with the kicker. But I think that the kicker is going to win the game for them in overtime. Um, I think that the Rams going to win the coin toss. And then they're going to either punt or turn over the ball. And over time, the Cincinnati Bengals are going to make one play um, in overtime to get the ball back for Cincinnati. And then, boom, Joe Burrow gets them down the field and sets a, a Super Bowl winning field goal. And that's how I got that going for me. I think that Joey, for, for the Cincinnati Bengals offense, running the football in a quick passing game is going gonna, is gonna to help them because – 
we know that Rams D line is is nice, and we know that the Cincinnati Bengals O line is not so nice. Um, so I think Joey is gonna have to be able to get that ball out his head quick. He can't hold on to the ball. Not gonna be able to do a lot of um, you know long route combinations. They're gonna have to do quick quick passes, hitches, quick slants, ins outs, easy stuff like that. And yeah, other receivers are gonna have to step up too. I don't think Jamar Chase is gonna have hundred. He might reach 85, 95, so 90. In, so in your take, in your expeditiously long take, what? Oh, duh, duh, duh. <laughs> what? Don't what? get towed off on this podcast. <laughs> I'm tired. Now. What, I'm tired. What is, who is your X factor for the Bengals that brings your take okay. all together? Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. One X factor on offense, one X factor on defense. All right. Who, on, all right. Who, who are they? On offense, my X factor is going to be Joe Mixon. I think that Joe Burrow is going to have to be able to get him the get him the ball, whether that's being like the quick passing game, the screen game, um, and they're they're going to have to be able to run the football. I'm not saying he's going to have to run for 200 yards or 150 yards, but he's going to have to get the ball at least 25 times and at least rush for 85 just to make the Rams respect the run game. And then that can open up the passing game, you know, because you have the linebacker stepping up in the box a little bit and it gives Joe Burrow a little space behind that, um, behind the coverage of where linebackers would be, you know, get some quick passes out. So that's my X factor for offense. X factor for defense is going to be Mike Hilton, the slot cornerback, because he's going to have to cover Odell if Odell's um, ever – well, well – you got to cover Odell, and he's also going to have to be able to cover Cooper Cup when they get into those bunch formations and they put Cooper Cup kind of in that slot position and have run different kind of routes. So I think the X factor is really going to be Mike Hilton right there. Um, and yeah, those are my X factors. Okay, so let me tell you why you're wrong. Mm. Indeed, but let me tell you why you're wrong because my X factors. On offense. Oh, so you going in reverse. So on you're gonna do offense. Factors, I'm going to tell you. Tell I'm, go in. Yeah, I'm going to tell you my experience. Because you just like to do stuff. You just like to do what you want to do. Yeah. It's a, it's yeah. A, it was an order that we did. Billy really rocking in reverse. Billy really rocking in reverse, you can. Okay. All right. <laughs> anyway, anyway, my X factor for offense, and it may be a typical one, but Matthew Stafford. And Here Matthew Stafford, go. let me tell you something about Matthew Stafford. Mm-hmm. Georgia quarterback, mm-hmm. number, number one pick in the NFL draft. Mm-hmm. Spent his whole career in Detroit, his first year out of Detroit, in the Super Bowl with the Los Angeles Rams. Could you, first of all, could you write a better story, first of all? I mean, the you know, Matthew Stafford has been working really hard for this. Uh, you know, all jokes aside, though, I do feel like, a, he's the more experienced quarterback uh, between the two, and definitely he is because he has more seasons under his belt. But I was about to also, say that's a duh type. But of I man. also, but I also feel, I also feel like Matthew Stafford is able to get going faster than Joe Burrow. Now, yes, Joe Burrow and the Bengals have been able to come back, especially when they came back against Kansas City um, Chiefs and everything. But the Rams have to treat this as such. That they can't let up, they can't keep their, they can't take their foot off the gas, and I feel like they've been shown that when they almost blew a lead to Tampa Bay. You realize and, they've been doing that all season, right? But okay, yeah, just, I, just... I, I understand that, but you have a team that's known for getting leads, and you have a team known for falling behind. Now, if the Rams come out and do what they're supposed to do, which is get that lead, and they just make it so insurmountable, do you really think Joe Burrow? Joe Mixon and Jamar Chase are going to be able yes. are going to be able to come back from let's just yes. say maybe a thirty point lead this time because I feel no like I think I think it's going to be another twenty eight to three another twenty eight to three okay mm-hmm. so let me get to my X factor or twenty eight to zero if it's twenty eight to zero let me get to my X, let me get to my X factors on defense my X so factor, offense is Matthew Stafford my okay. X factor I'm on come defense back to that. my X factor on defense is Mm-hmm. Le- Leonard Floyd. No. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Leonard 
Leonard okay. Floyd. I want to hear Leonard this Floyd. one. That's an interesting one. Leonard Floyd. Let me tell you mm-hmm. why it's Leonard Floyd. Because, okay, mm-hmm. obviously you got the three heavy hitters, and that's Aaron Donald, Von mm-hmm. Miller, and Jalen Ramsey. Okay? Right, right. Jalen Ramsey in the backfield, his number, he already stated, he already said um, in the press that he wants to guard the number one guy. So we can imagine that Jalen is going to be on Jamar Chase. Okay. Right, right, Jamar, right. If you look back, if you look back into the Kansas City game, Jamar, you know, didn't have a you know a fantastic first half, but he he came back in the second half. How about what was it like 77 yards? Um, seven catches, 77 yards, and a touchdown. And a touchdown. That's pretty good, but, but that is pretty good for a half. That is really good. But do you think that this will happen? Now, all that happened in the second half. Why? Because of blown coverages, missed assignments time and time again because what? They had a lead. They let them go. They weren't following their assignments like they were in the first half. They See, and the Rams do the same thing. So what do you think it can't happen again? But what I'm saying is, is you have, you have the, uh, you have an elite, you have an elite corner, you have an elite corner in Jalen Ramsey. And I just don't think, I just don't see that happening just you do know Jalen Ramsey plays a lot of zone, right? I understand he plays a lot of zone, but I still Which don't, means I, it's going to be a lot of pockets that Jamar can run to. But see, now, I would agree with you if they would play man, if they played a lot of man coverage. But the only problem with that is Jalen Ramsey is one one player. Uh, Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, and if C.J. Uzma can can play and it can play to to a, to a good level, to a good degree, um, I'm still concerned for the other folks I got to cover too now. Jalen Ramsey can't do it all. Though. But guess what? This is what this is what brings me to my second point. My mm-hmm. second my second point is the D line of the Rams. The D line of the Rams mm-hmm. is the number one in the NFL. Number one, you got Aaron Donald, top top player. Most people have him on number two of the top 100 players in the league. So, obviously, he's going to be double or triple team. And then you got Von Miller picked up from the Broncos, Super Bowl MVP, uh, great defensive player, uh, one-time sack leader. Uh, so, he's going to be – he's going to have attention to – my X factor is Leonard Floyd because you look at these two giants and then you have Leonard Floyd and, you know, an athletic – you know, pass rusher, linebacker type, and he can bunch stuff up in the middle. He can bunch stuff up in the middle, mess up that run game with Joe Mixon that you were talking about. Because if Joe Mixon doesn't get going, then how does that offense start moving? So if he can, so he if he can fumble that up a little bit, and then along with that, get to the quarterback, get to Joe Burrow, because like you know, I like to say that Joe Burrow has you know uh, sneaky speed. And when I say sneaky speed, it's like you don't really think he's going to run. You know, he's a pocket passer. He, he wants to take off. But as soon as he, you know, sees the opening, he's going to take it. So if you can get to him, because you know Aaron Donald is going to be at least good for – is going to be good for at least two. And then, you know, Von Miller, I would like to say he would get, you know, one and a half. So if Leonard Floyd – if Leonard Floyd can come in there and clean up, help with the help with the run game, run game, bunch it up in there, and then also get to Joe Burrow – when the attention's on Aaron Donald and Von Miller, there's no way I can see the Bengals see, this offense is the counter to topping that, off. This is the this is why I said this is why I counter my counter to that. This is why I said quick quick pass game and screens because because with the the quick pass game when you have when you have those pass rushers out there with a three step drop. That's going. That means the ball's going to get out fast. That pass rush is not going to be able to get to him if he's getting the ball out of his hand quick, right? Um, the screen game that also is going to help against the pass rush because most of the times when you have great pass rushers like Von Miller or Leonard Floyd, most of the time the screen is probably going to target target Leonard Floyd actually because Von Miller's an All Pro. His awareness is high. I'm pretty sure if we ran a if they run a screen to Von Miller's side, he'll be able to read it and drop back. But if we run a screen to Leonard Floyd's side and Leonard Floyd has a he has a great get off watching his film. He has a great he has great speed off the line of scrimmage. 
So they're going to use that speed against him. That's really all the – that's what I think the Bengals' game game plan is going to be, actually, because the Rams, their defense is, is pretty small in terms of size. The defense is pretty small as a defense. But they have a lot of speed. But you can the thing with speed is you can use that against them. So you're going to see a lot – I think you're going to see different kind of counter plays. You're going to see different screens where there's a receiver screen or a halfback screen where you're getting all those guys flying to one side of the field and then the offense hit them with a with a one step and cut it back across the field, and now it's just green grass over there. Um, that is that's my, that's my rebuttal to your D-line thing because there's ways to neutralize the D-line without having to have – max protection all the time but one thing i do want to give um the Bengals credit for is in the divisional round when they played tennessee they got sacked not, joe burrow got sacked nine times but the reason he got sacked nine times was their they kept they stuck to their philosophy which is five wide you know everybody's going to have a route to run nobody's going to stay in and block outside of the lineman tight end has a route running back has a route receivers have routes so that's that that's why joe burrow got sacked nine times when they played kansas city joe burrow got sacked once but they also had different packages in there with extra linemen. They had extra linemen. They had extra tight end packages. And they also had, you know, different plays where the running back didn't have a route all the time. Joe Mix had to stay in there and block. But this D-line, but this D-line the same, of the Rams is just way better than Kansas City's D, Kansas again, City's D-line. This is the best D-line they D-line, faced. I mean, they, they faced some good defenses. I'm not Think saying about they the division they came out defense, of. But... I feel like the this, division I they came out of. Feel like this is the best. This is the best D line they faced. Look yeah. at what they got. No, I would. You're right, but again, you can neutralize them. I'm not saying you're going to stop them. I think you're right with saying Aaron Donald's going to have two. I can see Aaron Donald getting two sacks. I can see Von Miller get one and a half. I can see Little Floyd getting a half a sack. But the thing is, I'm not saying you have to stop them. We just need to neutralize it, right? We just need to make it where okay, we go. You're going to get hit, but we need to make sure that you're not on the ground every play. And the way you do that, once them pass rushers start flying up the field to try to get to the quarterback, leak that leak that that running back out. Make the, let the running back chip and peel and and leak out, and you dump it off to Joe Mixon. That's why I said Joe Mixon is the X factor because if you can do that well and you can run a screen really well, now that now that that pass rusher Leonard Floyd. Instead of flying off the ball, now he worried to see okay, is he gonna pass it over my head this time? Is it a pass? Is it a run? They're gonna have. They're gonna be. A, it's a lot of mind games that the Bengals gonna to have to play to try to neutralize that defense. Because you're right, the D line is really, really, really good. You got two Hall of Famers, and Leonard Floyd is very talented. And then you also got Jalen Ramsey in the back. So you you got to be kind of careful on which what plays you call and how you run it. But there, there there's weaknesses, and there's ways that you can execute plays to neutralize. Well, there's the definitely there's definitely weaknesses in every defense. Uh, I'm sure that's the one they can find there, but the, I think the key, the key to the game on both sides is going to be sustainability, and that's sustainability in their game plan. Because, like you said, yes, the you know the Bengals did ne- neutralize the uh, the defense of the Kansas City Chiefs. It was only sacked once versus the nine times against um, the Titans, and he was able to you know stick in there. But even with those nine, even with those. Uh, eight less sacks from the previous game, and the, the only one that he received, they still found themselves in a hole of you know uh, with a, you know they get out eighteen point lead. Yeah, they got out. I give it to them. They got out barely, but they got out. But they but get I'm, out. But what I'm saying is, when it comes time, you know, it comes time comes time for uh, to play uh, the sustainability of the Rams of the Rams defense. Is this going to be the question? Is that's going to be that's going to be the key? The overall key to the game is, is the sustainability of the Rams defense because if they can hold up, and like I said, if Leonard Floyd can can like you said use their speed, yeah, you can. Yeah, that's a possible you know advantage the Bengals may have use their speed against them. But when you got a fast defense, it's really hard. You got to be very maniacal to use that speed against them when you got three pass rushers that can get after you and two that you got to get really deep attention to, which leaves another one that can come right up and just sneak behind you and, and take you out. And you got, and you got a good secondary. So if they come out there, the secondary is not as good as, as you think it is. That's what I'm saying. I think that people, we look, people look at the Rams and you look at all the names they have. Yes. They have lots of star power, but 
outside of those stars, the other players are pretty regular, and they have blown coverages many times. Not talking about just Jalen Ramsey, but look at those other guys that's on that team, on the other DBs on the team. Those guys give up yards. Mind you, again, they play a lot of zone, which helps them because they're not in man coverage all the time, which means they're able to, you know, to see what's going on. They're just covering ground instead of covering a person. But with zone coverages, that leaves pockets of green grass for receivers to, to, to break down in and gives little spaces for Joe Burrow to throw to. And I think that if, the, if Joe Burrow can, can, you know, dink and dunk, kind of – he's going to play like a Tom Brady type of game. Not not Tom Brady in Tampa, Tom Brady in New England, where he's taking short passes, digging and ducking, you driving your way down the field. And, you know, here or there, they might they might have to hit a big play. But I think for for as a fan watching the game, I feel like that first half is going to be very boring because I feel like the Rams are going to – the Rams are going to – especially in the first quarter, the Rams going to go up. They're going to let you – they're going to they gonna punch Cincinnati in the mouth. I Trust me, they're they going to punch Cincinnati in the mouth. But Cincinnati's not going to get knocked out. They're going to fight back. And I believe that they're going to fight their way back to where they can get the game into overtime, kick a field goal for the win. That's what I think is – that's how I think mm, it's going to go. I don't know. I feel and I'm like telling you right now, I feel Matthew like Stafford, Matthew, don't be surprised if Matthew Stafford is the reason the Rams caught, lose that game. Because I'm telling you right now, he's going to throw an interception. I don't know when. I don't know who's going to be to. But he's going to throw an interception. He's going to throw an interception. It's going to be – he's going to he gonna call the turnover. I'm telling you, the Bengals defense is going to take the ball away. Um, I don't know. Like I said, you know, if we're going to if we're going to we're going to flip side over to offense, I guess we can get into it. Yes. You know, Matthew Stafford, you know, you, you know, sometimes gets I like to say due for an interception. So sometimes, you know, you know, there's a little time stamp on him and he goes ahead and throws one. But you got to look at his offensive firepower. Now, can the Bengals defense cover? Cooper Cup, can they cover Odell? We saw what they did against Tyreek. Yeah, we now yeah. Oh, they, what we saw they, what we saw against Tyreek, what he did to them in the first half. The problem with that game, like I said, like Tyreek Ty, 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 had eighty five yards. I'm Ty, still, Ty, 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 yards. but it was sustainability. The Chiefs' offense, what they do, couldn't sustain exactly. They couldn't sustain. So okay, if, so but the Rams' if, offense can't so sustain. If, what happens? But wait, if the Chiefs' offense didn't sustain. That does, that's not that doesn't mean that the Bengals' defense didn't do what they did. The Bengals' defense is the reason that it didn't sustain. So if the Bengals' defense steps up against the Rams, is that gonna outside of the interception that Matthew's gonna throw? Because he gonna throw one. He gonna throw. I'm trust me. He gonna throw one. But that's because the Bengals gonna create that. So are you are you, are you sure are you sure that? That the thing that the Bengals the Bengals defense sustained, or did or did the Kansas City Chiefs offense just falter off, and that just gave them a chance? The to... Bengals defense sustained, and let me tell you why. Because it was multiple. How can it sustain multiple, if you give up an eighteen was, point lead? It was a multiple. Okay, if they were up by eighteen points, and they didn't score after that, who was the reason they didn't score? No, they no. ain't. They ain't. They just didn't. They just didn't play against air it was a defense out there that prevented them from scoring that's why i think the Bengals defense i think they prevented, the Bengals defense I think they isn't prevented great. themselves from i think they prevented themselves from scoring no they didn't I think, I think because they, they it wasn't they didn't they stopped game planning they stopped altering their game plan you can't they stop they you can't stop boom, game it was planning. over no 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 because that's what I if we look at happen. if you think – how do you think that? How? how do, you just how think do, that they just – How do I How do I think I that? I mean, First of all, I agree with the thought of complacency. Yes, if you would have said complacency, they got complacent with their lead, and then when when Rubber hit the road and they had to go into overtime, and then Patty threw that that pick, okay, yeah, they they got they got complacent in the second half. That's, a, can, that's, the, can, prime, that's the prime That's the prime example. But can we say the about. same thing about the Rams? That's the pr- wait, wait, wait. Hey, we're talking about Kansas City right now. Oh, I'm now we're talking about Kansas talking City. About, I'm, about I'm, the Rams. I'll move on to the Rams. I'm moving on to the Rams. That's what I'm talking about. That complacency. Why did they Patrick, did the same? Why thing? did Why did Patrick Mahomes throw that pick? Because he was going to whom? Who he was throwing, throwing to Tyreek Hill. Exactly. His and a DB one, his and number a DB, one receiver. And a DB had great coverage. Tipped the ball out out of Tyreek's hand. And the safety came from underneath and, and, and what had the ball. Was and Patrick it was a Mahomes doing the whole first half? Making plays. To who? 
Tyreek Hill. Exactly. So, so they uh, shut Tyreek so, down. Exactly. No, I wouldn't. It's not shut down. It's not shut if Tyreek down. didn't make play, Tyreek did I think Tyreek, if Tyreek I'm not mistaken, Tyreek had, plays. One, Tyreek had one catch in the second half. Exactly. If I'm not mistaken. If you're not making plays, if you're not making plays no more, you got to go to the next But person. that's because, okay, so we're just going to act like since literally, wasn't literally, batting down literally, balls. Me, literally, Miko Hartman and Tyreek Hill got into it on the sideline of that game because why? Because Patrick Mahomes was targeting Tyreek Hill more than me, more than Miko Harmon. Miko Harmon was upset because he felt like he was wide open and they needed to move the ball elsewhere. Because why? Because once you start depicting one player, the defense is going to converge on that player. Now that but doesn't. That's, I don't think that's how that worked with Tyreek though. Because think about it, that's Tyreek. That's he obviously was how it did. Double. That's obviously he was did. already that's obviously how it did work because he still only got one more catch. That's the only got one more catch. So what I'm saying mm. is the whole offense, uh, the whole offense got complacent, especially when it came to overtime. Because, of course, even everybody in the stands thought when Kansas City got that ball first, it was over with. But it wasn't because what? Patrick Mahomes turned and looked and made a questionable decision throwing to his number one receiver, someone who right. we thought was going to be, be the most this is reliable. What, this, is what this is what I'm getting at. This is what I'm getting at. This is what I'm getting at. You, you're saying – Patrick Mahomes, although, yeah, he threw the pick, and that's the reason they lost, right? But you're saying the fact that he threw it to Tyreek Hill means that they got complacent. But let's think about mm-hmm. it like this. If Cincinnati doesn't make that catch, they still got the ball. Okay. And then let's say, now, since we're doing hypotheticals, let's, let's say this. Let's look at the Niners, the Niners and Rams. Matthew Stafford almost let's let's not forget Matthew Stafford threw a pick, but the but the safety dropped it in the middle of the field. That would have been the end of the game. He dropped right. it in the middle of the field and they drove down and scored. They scored the game winning field goal. Okay, because so, you, you so want to know why? For, you want to know why? So do you credit? So do you say since the since the safety dropped it, Stafford is the reason that they won still? No. Or do you say since the safety dropped it, I'm not the safety is the reason that the Niners, the, let me, the Rams won. Let me give you the reason. Let me give you the reason why the Rams won. The reason Rams won is because San Francisco's defense was not sustainable, was not able to make plays. Because if they were able to make plays, what? Defender would have caught that ball. Game over. Okay, so now said. you're saying that their defense but, couldn't make plays. The Bengals defense made the plays. Okay, but if the, if the ball they comes, can, I think if they the can ball, make those if, plays. I, if, if you were DB in the NFL and the ball comes straight to you, I would expect you to catch the ball. Just saying. And I'm saying Again, that the you only just reason, said that the Niners defense that the didn't make reason, plays. The only reason that that play was made available was because of. Matthew Kansas Stafford. City. No, it was because of Kansas. I'm talking about Kansas City game. The only reason that play was made available was because of play, was because of Kansas City's complacency. Dave, what? Yes. That don't make no. That don't make no sense. How does it not? That make don't make sense? no sense. How does it not make sense? Let me. The let reason. Me, let, me, let me spell. You it out. said. Let me, spell it out. let me spell it out for you. Let me spell it out for you. Let me spell it out for you. No, okay. don't spell it out. Don't spell I'm, it out. This I'm ain't, spell this it ain't out. Leapfrog I'm learning. I'm gonna spell it out like ABC, like I'm Michael Jackson. I'm oh say, my. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying. Out. I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm, trying to understand I'm, what you're saying I'm because to I'm you to just explain. said. I'm trying to explain. You just said Casey's inability to sustain offense was the reason that they lost, right? Yes, right. But you, but you're also saying that that pick was due to their complacency. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But that's my, I'm saying. this is where I'm. This is what I'm getting at, though. You're saying the pick was due to their complacency. Mm-hmm. But in order for it to be a pick, but in order for it to be an interception, the defense got to catch the ball. Yeah, catch so the ball. Why, so, so, so when you look at the Niners game and you see the safety who dropped the interception in the middle of the field, why are you not saying anything about complacency with Matthew Stafford? Because the situations was the same, the results was different. Let me tell you this. Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes threw the ball in double coverage. That Niners game, Matthew Stafford threw the ball in double coverage. Just so happened that the Bengals made a play and the Niners didn't make the play. Exactly. That's why. So, getting. where's the complacency at? That's I'm confused. I'm, well, I'm, I don't get where the complacency this, at. This is this is where I'm gonna spell it out for you. Kansas City game. Okay. Why does Patrick Mahomes throw it in double coverage? Because it worked for him before, and he was in a situation where he was gonna go to old reliable, being com- be, being complacent, not moving it around, not taking it to a different receiver. He threw it to overlap, just like he did in the Bills game. He threw it up to overliable Travis Kelsey because 
after the press for that game, that apparently wasn't even the play that they had called in the huddle. Travis Kelsey just told Patrick Mahomes where he was going, and he t- and he gave it to him. It ended up it ended up working out. But in this one, in in this one where he went to overliable, what was her, helping him in the first half, throwing it to Tyree Hill? Yes, he threw it into the double coverage, and it was picked off. Yes, you could say the defense made the play, but if a quarterback throws it in double coverage and it's picked off, I mean. That's kind of a given. I would hope that it would get picked off because you're in the NFL. You're in the AFC championship. So why can't we just say then, that the Bengals made going, a great play? And then I'm going and now I'm going to and I'm now I'm moving on to the Rams. The Rams, yes, Matthew Stafford threw it in the double coverage. But no, he didn't make the play. So Therefore, so San Francisco's defense why, was not sustainable in the moment because okay. Could, so to answer, answer your original play. question, to answer your original question. Do I think Cincinnati's defense is going to be able to sustain a consistent amount of stops throughout the game? Yes. Why? The answer is yes. How? Because How? They, they proved could, it. They because they proved it. They proved it. They proved it in the second half. They proved it in two. They proved it in two and three. That two, three games straight in, entire, in this entire playoff. That they is proved not, it against, That is not. That true. is true. How did the game versus the Raiders end in the wild card game? Well, I'm Pick. talking. I'm defense. talking about. I'm How did the game? The last How did the game end? How did the game end versus Tennessee? They had three interceptions. That's three stops. That's making plays throughout a game. How did how did in it help? desperation, like, Cam? It doesn't matter. That's not. not. It doesn't no. matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you're games, desperate. In the last two games, the Bengals have been in desperation. In desperation attempts. Yes. Guess what? Because you want to know something. Because you want to know something. They've been in situ the, the situation with the t- Tennessee Titans game. If Ryan Tannehill doesn't throw that pick. It's game over. And if in, in the Kansas City game. So we're not going to talk about the we're not going to talk about the fourth down stop on the goal line. The Bengals got two. They had tackle Derrick Henry. So we're not going to talk about that either. No, because if Ryan Tannehill does not throw that pick, it's game over for I'm him. not talking about the pick. I'm talking about the goal line stop. That was before the pick. The goal line stop that the Bengals got when he had to tackle Derrick Henry. And he had to get Derrick had to get two. Derrick Henry had to get two yards. Okay. And the Bengals defense stopped him behind the line of scrimmage. And when that's and, not a that's not a, what, that's not a and, defensive play. And what play. In what quarter did that play happen? Shoot, I don't even remember. It was the fourth, I wasn't think, it? I think it was the the third. Hold on. I'm pretty sure let's, it was the fourth. Let's do a I'm little fact sure. check. Let's do a little fact check. Let's do a little fact fact check. Fact check. While he's fact checking, I'd like to everyone to um, you know want to take this time to make sure everyone check out our new mini series Chalk Talk with our first athlete interview, Jack Chinchu, uh, uh, Jack or JT for short is uh, Saint Pius uh, the tenth student. He's also a three star athlete with multiple offers, including ones from Indiana, Duke, and Miami. So please go check that out if you get a chance. Thank you. That was real nice. I'm still fact checking. I gave him that time. He's still fact checking what quarter, what quarter that play was. I want to put money on it. Was in the fourth quarter because I don't out. know what quarter it was, but the, but see, as, the, the as your as matter. your fact as your, as your fact checking, let me tell you why I disagree with you on feeling like the Bengals have uh, what was the word you used. Uh, uh, what was the word you used? It was uh, talking about their stops, uh, saying that they like they're not. I guess they're just. I'm just gonna say they're not in desperation. Opportunistic. They're opportunistic. They're opportunistic. And that's all you have to be. I'll it's say. A, I'll, I'll this, say. Okay. I'll, the I'll way agree, I look at this. The way I look at this. This is how I look at it. It's a Super Bowl. It's one game. You get one opportunity. This is not the NBA where you have a series. It's not MLB where there's a series and you can mess up one time and it's fine. You got another opportunity. No, you have to be able to make plays in key moments. You don't have to be great the entire game. You don't have to be an awesome defense or awesome offense. You just need to make plays when it counts. And the defense of the Cincinnati Bengals have done that from the wild card up to now. They've been doing it all season, if we want to be honest. They haven't been a great defense, but they've been able to, they've been an opportunistic defense where they can make plays in key moments and get key stops to give their offense an opportunity to make plays and get them into a game or win a game. And that's all I'm saying. And that's why I believe that they can win this game because I think that the Rams, the Rams are a type of team that leave cracks. They'll leave cracks open. They'll leave the door open. 
And they'll have it's gonna be moments in this Super Bowl that Cincinnati Bengals are gonna be able to take advantage of. Now, whether they take advantage of it or not of, or not, that's up to them. But I'm making my prediction based off the fact that there's an opportunity there. Making a prediction means that you feel like when the opportunity is there, that they'll take it. I feel like they'll take it. You feel you I feel you, like, you feel, I'm you saying feel like they'll take it. It's I feel really, like they'll take um, the opportunity. I feel like they can execute it. But I'm saying in reality, since I'm not playing and I'm not coaching, in reality, I don't know. But me personally, I feel like they can they can take advantage of those opportunities. Feeling and knowing is two different things because I don't know the future. I can't, I don't know what's going to happen. But in my gut, that's what I feel like that I feel like they can achieve that. I feel like they can accomplish that. That's why I'm making the, the, that prediction. I still definitely feel like you say, you know, when you said that the Bengals are opportunistic defense, I feel like, you know, that is true. I feel like they have had um, a lot of opportunities, you know, fall their way in the past couple of games. But, I mean, if certain game planning from the offenses changes, then we're looking at a, a very different AFC championship match. And then, and then See, the you're doing a lot of you're doing a lot of what if you're doing a lot of what if I'm just saying I'm just saying let's talk about let's talk about let's talk about what happened let's talk about what happened that's what I'm saying let's talk about what happened we're, talk, we're talking talk about, about what happened I think if this I happened talk, if it I am was saying what happened if it was different I am saying no, what happened yes I am no because let's talk about what happened I'm talking about the pick I'm talking about the pick from from Ryan Tannehill. Is that was that was that not an opportunity? He threw three of them. He threw three of them, but which one was the most crucial? The last one. The last one where he had the All ball. All of them was crucial. But no, because the last one, he had the ball, he had the time, and the whole game was in his hands. And he did if he does not throw that pick, the Bengals do not move on. It's and a yes, whole lot of if a lot of yes, if he didn't. That's do what that. I'm saying. It is but not. he did. Yeah, but he yeah, did. He did. So what I'm saying is he threw that pick. The Bengals, and Matthew Stafford going to do the did, same thing. Did the Bengals offense force it? I mean, defense force it? Did they force the pick? Time to do another fact check. Uh, Brought that, to you by YouTube. That, yeah, uh, yeah, fact check, fact check, whatever. They did not. He threw that pick on his own. And if he does not throw that pick on his own, the Bengals are not in the AFC championship. And yeah, that is a what if. All I'm saying is don't act like the Bengals defense is just some defense that can just, you know, oop, like, oh, I'm going to turn it up here and I'm going to decide not to turn it up here. And now at the end of the game, I'm going to get it at every key juncture. They just know what key juncture of the game is and they just turn it up. No, that was an opportunity that fell their way. And yes, it did fall their way. And yes, they may they may have taken advantage of the complacency of the Kansas City Chiefs in the very next game. See, this is where I'm about to correct you. This is where I'm about to correct you. I'm about to I'm about to correct you. To do that against Aaron Donald. I'm about to correct Ron you. Miller. Matthew I'm about Stafford, to correct you. Because first Cooper of all, Cup, the triple crown winner and Odell Beckham Jr. It is going to first be very of all, hard sir, to do that. Look here, Mr. Stephen Hudson. Don't put words in my mouth. I never said that the Cincinnati Beagle defense was all that and could stop anybody. I said that's what they she's can make. Like. I said, I said what I said. <laughs> <laughs> was that what I said was that the defense, I feel like the defense is opportunistic in the fact that they will make key plays. I'm not saying that it's a reason why I got the Bengals coming back instead of having a lead to begin with. Right. I'm not saying defense is going to, is going to shut down the Rams offense because that's just not going to happen. But I think that they, they'll make the key plays and key moments that'll give their team an opportunity to win a game. And that I really believe that way because not just because I believe it is because I've seen it. I've seen them do it. Mm-hmm. And we, when I've seen something, ha- when I've seen somebody do something over and over and over again, at, at some point I'm going to start believing, okay, yeah, they're going to do it again. They can do it again because I've seen it happen again. Well, you can't be the comeback kids forever. And I feel like they don't got to be it forever. It's just one like, game. I feel like you do it for one game. In a stage in a stage like the Super Bowl, a stage like the Super Bowl, you cannot get down because the only person that I've seen come back from a very insurmountable lead is Tom Brady. We don't have to and talk we, about that. Yeah, we don't have to. Yeah, we didn't have to until you until you brought up the coming back from leads thing. Okay, because Joe Burrow, he's good, but he's not no Tom Brady. 
Okay. So I'm Listen, saying it. So people I'm, forget. People forget. Again, defense. Defense. What, what, what people, about them? Because to me, I'm they're just, opp- to me they're opp- opportunistic, and they take advantage of opportunities that fall their way. That's what I feel like. Yeah, and that's key to winning. That's key to winning. Yeah. Nobody. They say they say defense wins championships, but nobody says great defenses win championships because not all championship defenses are great. Some championship defenses are just opportunistic. They just make key plays in key moments. And that's all you got to do for one game. One game. You just need to make one play. That's all it takes is when one I say, play to turn when something I say, around. When I say opportunistic. Look at, the, look at I, like your what? man Tom Brady. The one play that came to turn that Super Bowl around versus Atlanta Falcons in 2016 was the forced fumble that came against Matt Ryan um, from the Patriots defense on Dante Hightower. Tom Brady didn't make that key play to turn that game around. The defense made that key play to turn the game the around. One, but and no. that's what I'm saying. No, the defense no, is going to no, be no, opportunistic. No, no. No, no, no. to make a key play nope, to turn nope, the game around. Nope, That's all I'm saying. Nope, nope, We've seen nope, it happen before. Nope, nope. Let me tell you why you're wrong about that one. Because let me tell you what the key play was. The key play was was on his was on offense for the Patriots and it was third down. And that and that catch by Julian Edelman that everyone thought wasn't the catch. That was the key play that turned the game around because they went right down the field and tied the game up. That is what dude, happened because if Julian Edwin doesn't in catch order to it, tie the game up, if Julian Edwin doesn't catch it, that's game. Because they either have to punt or go for a long on fourth down and most likely don't get it. So if we want, if we want to reverse that, and when I say opportunistic Bengals defense, yes, they've taken advantage of the opportunities thrown their way, but on Today on Sun on Super Bowl Sunday, who will be throwing those opportunities to the Bengals? That will be the Rams' I'll offense. I'll be having to, I'll be having the to Rams check off, you. That will be, 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 be the Rams' because when offense. you said you said the key play was when Tom Brady had to go there to tie the game up, dude, dude, the strip sack came before before they even had the game tied. It was twenty eight to twelve when the strip sack came. That turned the game around. That exactly. turned the game around. No, the the game had to was get not turned, The game was not going to be turned around until they tied it. The dude, dude momentum. So you just you just so all of a sudden you just I, forgot what momentum is. You just game, forgot how, how that works. How was the game going? You just forgot around. how momentum they works. They make Julian Edelman. You, so you just forgot how momentum works. And momentum can be taken away just like that. So the if defense Julian had Edelman to make plays make for catch, the momentum from gone. Being, the defense had to make a strip sack, which was a turnover that gave the the New England Patriots the football in the in the other team's red zone. On the other team side of the field, they gave them, we put them in position to score more points. The defense had to make a stop. The turnover created more momentum because the Falcons couldn't offset the momentum from the New England Patriots touchdown to get it to 12 to 28. When they were driving down the field to try to offset the momentum and kick a field goal, or get some more points. The defense made a play that kept the momentum on the New England side of the ball. Okay, but did that? Okay, that's how that, momentum works. Okay, worked. but did that the play? Falcons couldn't did that make a play, play to switch stop, the momentum? Did that play and that stop lead to Tom Brady in that moment tying the game up? Yeah, because no, think about it. Did they tie the play? Think about did, it. Did, did they tie the game up it. on the drive? Did they, tie the, did they tie the game up Listen, after that script? In yeah, order, in order for them to tie the game, in order for them to tie the game up, the defense had to be out there first. They didn't just get the ball back because they onside kicked it. The defense had to go out there and play. Okay. And they got but stopped. The, okay, but the defense could have got the ball back from a punt. That's my point. That is my point. Yeah, but if they get the ball back. If you if get they... a stop, you get a stop to get another team to punt you the ball and give your – you have momentum. You have momentum, and your, and your offense is scoring points. No matter what. Their offense wasn't scoring points. I'm saying no matter what, them offense, the offense – had to bring the game back. And the turning point for the game was when Julian Edelman Dude, caught that ball. Everyone thought the it was the only way the and offense could turn right the game down there. And so you telling me you telling me right here, you, you so you this is what you're saying. If the New England Patriots defense didn't get stops, the New England Patriots would have still came back. How does that work? How do you come back and you're still getting points? That is not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying if the New England offense did not make make the plays that they did they would not have came back but you, but so if they if so in order for them to make plays they had to be a defense that couldn't that that couldn't make plays right 
So the Falcons defense could make plays, which allowed the New England offense to make plays. So the same can be said about the New England defense because they made plays that prevented our offense from making plays. Now that house is deep. All they had to do was get the ball back at some point and have Tom Brady drive down the field. That's Dude. that's that's that's, just, that's essentially what they did. Dude. The strip sack help. Yes. Dude. What Stop I'm telling playing. you, what I'm telling Stop you playing. is is that Julian Edelman, that Julian Edelman catch turned the game around. Then. That can't turn the game around if the game was already turned, man. The no. game was already turned. How was it turned? It's a third the down. Strip it's, a th- it's a third the strip, and long. This is how it it's was turned. This is how it was turned. Because long. the Falcons the Falcons was about to switch momentum, and we're going to get into it, because that same drive with the strip sack, Julio made that impressive catch on the sideline. But then there was a holding call because it was a good pass rush, and we couldn't, and we couldn't prevent the block from happening. So then we got a holding call. So that brought the, the, the ball back. And then after the holding call, then Dante Hightower came out of nowhere, prevented the Devontae, Devontae Dante Freeman didn't know how to block, didn't know how to pass block. So now we got a strip sack. The defense had to make play. That's what I'm telling you. The deep that's the turning point. Momentum was there was no momen- momentum on the Falcon side. And I feel like the same thing about that New England Patriots defense that's opportunistic and that made plays in the moment that keep momentum turned and didn't allow the other team to shift the momentum the opposite way. The Bengals defense can do the same thing in the Super Bowl. And it's going to happen. Watch. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. The Bengals defense is really, is really, I'm really up. Uh, disappointed that you would compare the Domingos defense to the New England Patriots defense because they're nowhere near the same. And that's a story for, that's a conversation for another time. I never but, said they were the same. But, I said being opportunistic. But I, not, being, I, I, don't even think, opportunistic. I, I don't even think they said, I'm just saying that I think, I think that the Rams will limit the opportunities that they may possibly give the Bengals defense and the Rams. Matthew Stafford going to turn over that and ball. And the Rams. Okay, Matthew Stafford may turn the ball over once, but turning the ball over once does not always mean that you're going to lose. Or the that Falcons you're turning the ball over once. You saw how that turned out. Okay, but that was Tom Brady and the Patriots. This is – Y'all be even, saying it like even though, even, even though it's Joe Shiesty. And, I, and believe me, I love Joe Shiesty. I love what he's Again, done. It's a collaborative Bengals. team effort. But, but I just do not think that the Rams' mistakes will equal up to Kansas City's or ten, or Tennessee or the Tennessee Titans, and the Rams will be the Super Bowl champions. Listen, all I'm gonna tell you, you have a team, is that that that, a, that, a that Tampa Bay game, a team that's comfortable, a team that's comfortable from that playing Tampa from Bay behind game is, a preview. is very dangerous. It's that very Tampa dangerous Bay game. For them. That Tampa Bay game was a preview of what's about to happen in so far. Okay? It was a preview. I'm telling you, laugh. I'm serious. I'm like being so serious right now. It's a preview because you are comparing we've Joe seen Burrow this. to Tom Brady. No, I'm not. No, that's I'm like not. The, that's like the third time you've done that. I'm not comparing Joe Burrow to Tom Brady. I'm saying the super the 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 Tampa Bay game with the Rams, the way they turned the football over in, in key moments, and the Tampa Bay's defense made made stops in key moments. That's a preview of what's about to happen in the Super Bowl because not only have the Rams shown that they can blow a lead, Cincinnati has shown that they can come back from, from a deficit, and the defense can make stops while trying to come back from a deficit. So all, that's all I'm saying. We it's going They're going to reveal themselves, and they're going to choke. I just feel like they're going to choke. And we've seen it before with, with Sean McVay and the Rams. We've seen this before in Atlanta. Driving down the field, they had a, Jared Goff had a good touchdown. Inaccurate pass through a pick. Defense made a play. Well, that's why they have Matthew Stafford now, and I feel like Matthew Stafford he will, gonna show, throw one will show up in the biggest game of his life. He's going to throw and one, too. you know what? I honestly feel like – I feel Because we're going to be honest, he shouldn't be here in the first place. I feel like Matthew Stafford. He shouldn't be here. Oh, mm. You know what? That's a conversation for – that's a conversation if, for If the time. Niners had a safety that's with some hands – if the Niners had a safety with some hands, it would be the Niners versus the Bengals. That sounds like the Niners' fault, then. Uh, oh yeah, no, no, for sure, it's the Niners' fault. But I'm just saying, keep throwing up stuff like that. Jesse Bates, that he, Jesse Bates, that's an All Pro. He gonna catch it. 
Well, I'm sure. Bum Bam, I'm he sure, going to catch you. I'm sure that Matthew Stafford has Mike Hilton, it, has he going to catch it. A Cheetah Bay Woozie, he going to catch it. I am sure that Matthew Stafford has it corrected. But that's what we said coming into the playoffs. We ain't seen that change yet. Because Matthew Stafford threw a pick in every single game towards the end of the season. Literally. Okay. But he's still in the Super Bowl. And he, he is there. And I don't remember him playing from behind to any team. Hmm. Let's see. I mean, you should Let's have to see. play behind when you got Cooper Cup, Odell Beckham, Van Jefferson, Cam Akers, and a decent offensive line with Andrew Withworth at the tackle spot. And you got a defense like J- J- uh, Jalen uh, Ramsey, Aaron Donald, Von Miller, and Leonard Floyd. You shouldn't be playing from behind. But if you are, that's a problem on them, not on the other team. No, that's what I'm saying. The Bengals are going to be in for something if they start playing from behind because that is their M.O. But it is, and you know what the but, mo is? They but, play from behind and they come back and win. They're a second half team. They know that America knows that, and you know that. I don't. They gonna show you. Being you know, a second can, half team look, is not. They can show good. you better. They can. They, they can show you better. Than I can tell being, you. Being a second half team is not good because that bites you in the butt more often. It's than not, not. It's not good for some teams, but they they can handle it. They can handle it. Some teams. It depends on the situation. It depends on the team. It depends on what type of players you have. If, they, if the lead is just so insurmountable to the first half, you're just going to say, oh, we're a second-half team. We're going to take this, and they up by 30? Come on. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be 28. I think it's going to be 28 to 3 or 28 to 0 at halftime. And Joe Burrow, I, know, I, I, think, the Rams, I think the Rams going to uh, Sean McVay has been kick here off before. in the second half. Sean McVay has been here before. And if he gets a chance to put the lead up on the Bengals, he is not going to step off the gas. He's been here before. He's tasted. I mean, the Super that, that would be the tasted, smart thing to he's do. Tasted the Super Bowl. He's tasted the Super Bowl before. He doesn't want to lose it again. He's not facing Tom Brady. He's facing a second-year quarterback, a good second-year quarterback. But I feel like it's somebody, a team that the Rams' offense and defense can take advantage of if they play it the right way. But I digress. Well, you said they played the final, right way. Final. It, Final predictions, Cam. Prediction score wise. I done told you my prediction. I done told you mine. Say it again. Bengals 34, Rams 31 in overtime. I think it will be Bengals 21. Uh, Oh, yeah. And Rams 42. So what I'm hearing is you think I'm about to be asleep on the Super Bowl because if the Super Bowl is that uh, far uh, separated, child, I'm about to be asleep. It's going it's, it's going to be Seahawks and Broncos. Ooh, so I child. feel like. Well, also let's not forget about the halftime show. That's going to be pretty entertaining. Oh yeah, Snoop Dogg, Mary J. Blige, Dr. Dre, and Kendrick. Uh, that's uh, and, and, and Eminem. Don't forget Eminem. Oh yeah, Eminem. Slim Shady. That's gonna be something. Mm-hmm. That's, mm-hmm. that's gonna be TV. nice. I'll be able to do my little Mary J dance. Mm-hmm. Stepping and kicking. Something quite different. But everyone, thank you guys for listening. Um, make sure to check out um, this episode and our episode of Chalk Talk, like I said, with Jack Chinchu, our first uh, episode in our mini series. Uh, where we interview athletes and and really everyone is surrounding the sports uh, the sports world and a new pers- a perspective on athletics. Um, make sure to follow us at real at real talk underscore wsc on Instagram. That's real talk underscore wsc on Instagram, and you can listen to this and all of our other episodes wherever you get your podcast. Thank y'all for listening and have a fantastic Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs>